Hi everyone, Dan Gunner from Insane Forensics. Welcome back to Tech Talk Tuesday, where every week we try to give something to help your threat hunting program. And today we're going to talk a little bit less about threat hunting and more about how you can build a wireless assessment tool using a Raspberry Pi for under $100. Um, specifically, this is a build we built out and we're going to show you how we built it, the parts that went in, um, and the steps to go through it. So in case you're trying to build your own wireless assessment kits, um, we're going to show you how we did it to help you out. So hopping right into it. So for the home build setup, the best approach and the kind of current generation approach with the Raspberry Pis is going to be the Pi 4 Model B. Um, that's what this one is. If we open it up, um, you have a picture inside there that you can see on this slide. But what we have here, we have the eight gig. Um, you can use the four or two or the one gig if you're really pushing it. Um, I wouldn't recommend on one gig because again, you might need more memory on it. Um, but certainly with the Pi 4 Model Bs, um, you have the option of, you know, the, the amount of RAM that you want to give it, the amount of memory in there. You can buy these kits with boards. So generally we'll buy the Canna kits are a popular one and we'll put a link down in the description for what we buy. Um, if you just buy the board, you can see the price there. The two gigs run around 45 while the eight run around 75. The kit, what it does is it adds the power cord. It adds, um, actually, I think this case that I'm showing here and the one you see in the picture, um, I think this came out of one of the Canna kit um, kits that we ordered. Um, and then you still do have to get the SD card. So you see the SD card image there. That one in here is probably a little bigger. We actually pulled that image from Amazon. We generally use um, 128 or 256 gig SD cards. 64 gigs is fine. You can get them off Amazon $11. For the Wi-Fi cards, and we'll talk about compatible Wi-Fi cards. We have one that's lying around. It's this model here you see, the Alpha ones. Um, the Alpha ones, you can get these off eBay. They're a little more pricey on Amazon. What's important to note on these cards is the compatibility. We'll talk about how to tell if a card's compatible. In our setup here though, we use this Alpha card. If you wanna know another card, I haven't used this card before, so I don't know how well it works. I would assume it works pretty well. Also, Hack5, um, they sell a card that's similar. But again, you know, you do wanna make sure that the chipset that you get specifically and the wiki that you'll see later, I'll talk you through looking at the chipset values at the bottom of this to make sure that it's capable of modern mode and injection. You wanna make sure you have the right chipset um, specifically too, sometimes if you get certain chipsets, they're supported by default in Kali to where if you get other chipsets or other ones that require drivers that Kali doesn't know about, you might have to install and install drivers yourself. The benefit of this chipset and this card is Kali supports it out of the box. So for us, as soon as we actually write Kali on the Pi, it's just plug and play from there. Um, when you add this up again, right, you're going to need the board, you're going to need the SD card, you're going to need the injection card itself. Um, you know, low end, we were finding it about $94 today. If you go to eBay or you get a good deal, you might be able to bring that down or up depending on, you know, sizing and what you're going for. But compared to commercial versions, and I'm going to pull the Hack5 versions, um, if you're not looking to build yourself, Hack5 does have some good consumer grade and you know, kind of entry level professional grade stuff. They have things like Wi-Fi coconuts. This is a newer one to where it has enough antennas to listen on all of the bands at once. Um, instead of if you only have one or two antennas, you can only listen to one or two um, bands at a time. The Wi-Fi coconut, the advantage of it is you can listen to all the bands at once um, in the Wi-Fi coconut. You know, the advantage with these is um, these are compatible with Kismet, with Aircrack and G, with a lot of the toolkit that you'll use um, open source tools wise. The other option is the Hack5 Pineapple. Um, the Mark 7 is the current one. This is actually a Tetra, so this is the older class of the Wi-Fi Pineapple. But again, the things that we show and the things that we talked about last week with Wi-Fi attacks, what we built on the Pi also works out of the box on the things like the uh, Hack5 pine pineapples. So again, if you're looking more for someone else to do the building work, these are good options for those. Um, I'll also note that Hack5, it comes often with its own 
um, C2 infrastructure and other things. And so if that works into your workflow, great. We've had engagements where it has worked for our workflow and we've had engagements where we honestly built our own C2 um, just because with the intricacies of the engagement, it was easier for us to build our own backhaul and build our own management for the pineapples that we had out in a tax space. But what I wanted to show here is just a few commercial options in case you don't want to build yourself. Um, again, the prices are a little more though than if you do build yourself with the, um, with the Raspberry Pi. We talked about other supported hardware. So what you want to make sure with your wireless card, right? Um, you have to have a chipset that the Aircrack NG set of tools at Kismet that the wireless tools are capable of using. Um, some of the chipsets do and don't support things like packet injection. So, you know, if you're deauthing someone from the network, if you don't know what deauth is, watch our video from last week. We talked about Wi-Fi attacks. But when you get into things like deauthing people, actually putting packets out on the wire, transmitting them, um, that's when you need the injection capable um, cards and you know, some cards, I don't know if there are cards that aren't monitor enabled, but you'd want to make sure that the card is also monitor um, enabled. What this Wikipedia page will do is it'll show you how to make sense of the numbers on the label on the back. So you can't see here, but on the label, um, these numbers are actually really important to seeing if these cards are actually compatible with Kali and with the Wi-Fi attack tools. Um, and what the Wiki Wikipedia page does there is talk you through what each of the numbers do so you can see, hey, is this actually compatible? I think also on the Wikipedia, I've seen it say, hey, these are the drivers that are supported out of the box and these are the cards where you're going to have to install additional drivers on Kali. So again, hardware is something to be mindful of just with um, Wi-Fi attacks in general and what the cards need to be capable of. So how you're actually going to install Kali if you do go with the Raspberry Pi option is there are actually Kali builds for the Pi. What you can see on this page is if you go to the Kali, get Kali page, you can go to the ARM section because again, this is ARM and not Intel. Um, if you go to the ARM page, they actually have pre-built images for the Pi 2, 3, and 4. If you're using the Zero, which is a smaller version of the um, Raspberry Pis, they also have those, but if you have a full Pi 4, you're going to get that image for um, 2, 3, 4. We have the 64 gig actually loaded out on this one. And what you'll do is download this. Why we use these is it actually has a lot of the tools built in. Aircrack NG is already in there. It already has drivers and configurations. So the advantage of going with these images is that it works straight out of the box. Um, you know, very low configuration time. So you're going to grab the ISO from the Kali page. And then what you can do is Raspberry Pi now has their own installer tool. If you go to the Raspberry Pi software page, um, that's that page is what's on the left as you're looking here. You can grab the actual imaging tool, which is what you see on the bottom right. With that imaging tool, you just click on choose OS and you choose the ISO for Kali. You choose uh, storage and you can choose the SD card that's hopefully mounted, um, the SD card that you'll eventually put into the Pi, and then you press image. It's going to go ahead and image that SD card with the Kali image, and then you'll actually be good to go to take that SD card and put it straight into the Raspberry Pi. So next steps after this. So now you've installed the Kali image onto the Raspberry Pi or onto the SD card. You put the SD card in, um, it's going to boot up. You'll have access now to Kali running on the Pi. Um, so now your step, next steps on this is step one, you're going to then need to explore Aircrack and G or the tool you wanna to bring in. Um, Aircrack and G, why recommend it? It's already on Kali. Again, if you have the good co or compatible cards then it, you're set to go. Um, but explore that set of tools, right? Um, the first thing you might do, step two, is capture some handshakes from a wireless, uh, you know, from wireless hardware and from a wireless SSID that you're authorized to do so from. Um, begin capturing handshakes. Step three, you know, you should experiment with actually cracking those captured handshakes um, to prepare you for step four, taking it into production. Last week, again, we covered how to use Aircrack NG. So you, if you're new to Aircrack NG, 
definitely go back and see that video. This week, we really wanted to just cover the hardware setup and getting started with the OS. But again, you follow those steps for install, getting the hardware set up, getting the OS on, and you're good to go. So again, today what we covered is the hardware side of how to build a wireless pen testing or wireless assessment box using a Raspberry Pi for roughly a, under $100. Um, again, it's a little cheaper than sometimes the Hack 5 gear. Um, you can get good deals on eBay. Right now it is hard to get Raspberry Pis because of the supply chain issue. Um, but yeah, you know, this, this was just a quick overview of how you can take a Raspberry Pi and build a very efficient um, wireless assessment box. So thanks for joining in this week. We hope to see you back next week.